Today, I'd like to get even more precise with fourth dimensional thinking and its relationship with how a person appears to be in this world, and also how the world appears as the world. Fourth dimensional thinking, as Neville defines it, is thinking from the end, which is distinct from thinking of the end. Ideal fourth dimensional thinking is thinking feelingly from the premise of already being what you desire to be, and or the world already being how you desire it to be. Fourth dimensional thinking denies former conversations which are not ideal to renew the mind from the premise of being ideal now through which this world made visible through the five senses refracts the light of consciousness accordingly. Romans 12.2 Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. See, when a person's attention is appearing to go in a direction that is not ideal, it is a clear indication of their mental state, as Neville says here. Therefore, the individual sees whatever they are by virtue of the state of consciousness from which they view the world. Any attempt to change the outer world before they change the inner structure of their mind is to labor in vain. Everything happens by order. So now the inner structure of mind contains past imaginings. These past imaginings play out as how a person relates to the world and how the world relates to them, which include people, environment, circumstances, and information. Everything is either a manifestation of one's acceptance of desire from the premise of having or from the premise of past imaginings that are not considered ideal. So regardless of how the world now appears through the five senses, all power is now to think feelingly from the premise of having, like that's the way it is, the way you've accepted the desire is. And by that I mean from the premise of already being what you desire to be, and or the world already being how you desire it to be, thus automatically denying the former lack of fulfillment, not so ideal conversations. Now, in 1948, Neville put together The Five Lessons, a master class on the law, which I'd like to further explore today with you, along with some personal insights and experiences in relation to fourth dimensional thinking. Lesson number one is titled, Consciousness is the Only Reality. So now the worldview of consciousness being the only reality purifies the mind of any beliefs of their existing secondary causes. I found this helpful as I know if I don't appear in an ideal way, as in, I don't appear to be congruent with acceptance of my desires, then I accept desire by thinking feelingly from the premise of having, which changes how I appear, as body is an expression of mind, and body appears to move automatically by law, as it is an emanation of consciousness. As he also mentioned in the changing of the feeling of I lecture, any attempt to change the outer world before they change the inner structure of their mind is to labor in vain. Everything happens by order. So the person appearing to labor in vain is a result of past imaginings. Thus, the way to not labor in vain is to imagine how you relate to body ideally, which results in it appearing accordingly. For example, I remember when I read Thinking Grow Rich back in 2004, and he said, if you believe that money is a result of hard work alone, perish the thought, which I thought was nonsense at the time because I was working very hard and stressfully often up until that point, and that's how I earned money. Upon reflection, that was only me persisting in that imaginal activity, which appeared accordingly. Now, when I release identification to that imaginal activity, by imagining that more money can appear more often in fun, flow-based ways, something interesting happened. Sure enough, more money started appearing in more fun, flow-based ways without needing to stress. So thus, money appears the way you imagine it appears. If you imagine yourself talking to a friend about how you have multiple streams of income while you enjoy a flow-based life, that's how it appears. Some of those former imaginings were a result of identification with beliefs of consciousness not being the reality imagined the way I desired into experience, but rather the world that appears imagined to be all that appears and thus all that exists. You can see clearly then how much this would limit a person by continuously only reimagining what the senses currently evidence. 
as he also said in the book, out of this world. The habit of seeing only that which your senses permit renders us totally blind to what otherwise we could see. Now, lesson number two is titled, Assumptions Harden into Fact. So we already established that fourth dimensional thinking, as Neville defines it, is thinking from the end, which is distinct from thinking of the end, which is, I have what I desire, rather than I crave what I desire. So you may also engage in fourth dimensional thinking in the following way. He says, reduce the idea, simple phrase like, isn't it wonderful, or thank you, or it's done, or it's finished. Something that implies the desire is already realized. Isn't it wonderful, or thank you, certainly imply that. These are not all the phrases you could use. Make up out of your own vocabulary the phrase which best suits you. I say things like flow, ideal now, or that's the way it is. He says, but make it very, very short and always use a phrase that implies fulfillment of the idea. Just relax and enter into the feeling of actually being what you want to be. So now he mentioned you could do this in state akin to sleep, which is prior to sleep with, for example, thank you. And capturing the feeling of having what you desire. That's what prayer is. Prayer is acknowledgement of already having. Like, thank you, Father. I have. Thus, desire means already having. You can also do this throughout the day if you ever find yourself reacting from past imaginal activity in relation to what appears. Desire means you have. For example, if you go into the etymology of the word desire, we see of the sire which sire means father, so it means of the father, or something within seeking to express. So desire means having inwardly. What you seek, you find within. You found it through desire, as he said here in lesson number four, which we'll discuss in a moment. What you now desire, you already have, and you seek it only because you have already found it. You found it in the form of desire. So again, desire means already having. Thinking fourth dimensionally is thinking feelingly from the premise of already having. By feeling, I mean feeling it real now, like that's the way it is now. So lesson number three is titled Thinking Fourth Dimensionally. In this part, he speaks of the spiritual mind and the natural mind. To the spiritual mind, the past, present, and future are a present whole. This means you are free to imagine what you desire from the premise of already having as through imagination, the world is made visible through the five senses, appearing to rearrange and reflect ideally accordingly. Here's what he has to say about the natural mind, which is what I want to relate to what I brought up earlier to the worldview of consciousness being the only reality, which is the spiritual view that purifies the natural mind of any beliefs of there being secondary causes. He says, to the natural mind, the past and the future are purely imaginary. The natural mind does not believe that it could revisit the past and see it as something that is present, something that is objective and concrete to itself. Neither does it believe that the future exists. So very precisely, it is beliefs that make up the natural mind that is made visible through the five senses accordingly. Unlike the spiritual mind, that knows that the past, present, and future are a present whole. Now, all changes are initiated beyond the natural mind, which again consists of the beliefs that result in the world persisting to appear accordingly to those beliefs. The spiritual mind transcends this all, and with fourth-dimensional thinking, we harmonize desire and fulfillment ideally. This is living as one with the Father, which is why it says in Mark 11.24, I tell you, you can pray for anything, and if you believe that you have received it, it will be yours. So prayer is acknowledgement of already having. As it says, believe that you have received it, as in already have it. This is ideal fourth dimensional thinking. Ideal fourth dimensional thinking thus denies the former conversation, which is not ideal, to renew the mind, to appear from the premise of being ideal now, from which the world made visible through the five senses, is allowed to appear as a refraction of the light of consciousness accordingly. 
Which brings us to lesson number four very nicely, which is no one to change but self. Here we do not identify with any beliefs that result in temptation to point at appearances as visible causes. This also applies to what one may imagine to be as the past and the future. He says, Because life molds the outer world to reflect the inner arrangement of our minds, there is no way to bring about the outer perfection we seek other than by the transformation of ourselves. No health cometh from without. The hills to which we lift our eyes are those of an inner range. It is thus to our own consciousness that we must turn as to the only reality, the only foundation on which all phenomena can be explained. We can rely absolutely on the justice of the law to give us only that which is of the nature of ourselves. To attempt to change the world before we change our concept of ourselves is to struggle against the nature of things. There can be no outer change until there is first an inner change. As within, so without. Everything we do, unaccompanied by a change of consciousness, is but futile rearrangement of surfaces. However we toil or struggle, we can receive no more than our concept of self affirms. So now the last lesson is to remain faithful to your idea. The way to remain faithful to an idea is to allow everything to rearrange to reflect what you imagine, which is releasing the beliefs of soul doership, like John 5.30. I can of myself do nothing. The Father within me doeth the work. Remember, there is no secondary cause outside of consciousness. Consciousness is the only reality. He says, The habit of seeing only that which our senses permit renders us totally blind to what otherwise we could see. To cultivate the faculty of seeing the invisible, we should often deliberately disentangle our minds from the evidence of the senses and focus our attention on an invisible state, mentally feeling it and sensing it until it has all the distinctness of reality. So mentally feel it by thinking feelingly from the premise of already having in relation to what appears. Again, when applying metaphysics, this does not mean trying to argue with the world made visible or trying to do something to manipulate it. Rather, acceptance of self, the way you imagine yourself to be, letting thus the world be and allowing it to rearrange to reflect how you'd like it to be. Remember, the world made visible, which includes body, mind, people, environment, circumstance, and information, appear and appear moved through imagination. And now is where all the power is to live in fulfillment, your true nature, by accepting that what you desire is already yours, like thank you, I have, or by relating to appearances through ideal fourth dimensional thinking, from the premise of already having to remain abiding in and thus automatically operating from your ideal state of consciousness, through which the world made visible through the five senses is done for you, ideally accordingly. So I trust you found this video to be helpful. Let's go ahead and conclude this with an auto suggestion to further encourage. You could say, I allow all to appear ideally from my true self being fulfilled by acknowledging desire meaning already having as I abide in self talk from the premise of having allowing the world made visible through the five senses for me to appear ideally accordingly. If you would like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk with you soon. Take care.